Welcome to the episode of uh, Jay Leno's Garage. Tonight we're looking at the, uh, well, this is a new Camaro convertible. This is the first Camaro convertible I've seen. Uh, depending on when this airs, it might be the first one you've seen as well. And the interesting thing was, this one went right from the factory, directly to my friend uh, John Hennessy down there in Texas, to, uh, well, give it about 600 horsepower. John hasn't changed the look of the car at all, so this is basically what the new Camaro convertible looks like. John, how you doing? Welcome hey, Jay, back I'm again. Good. Thank you for good having me. Good to see you. Good to see Great you. to be here. Uh, boy, you're doing a lot of GM stuff now, huh? GM's got great stuff for us to modify, so yeah. you know, if a little bit of horsepower is good, more horsepower is better. Yeah, they, no matter how sophisticated, the manufacturers always leave a few horsepower on the table, sure. don't they? So you Absolutely. can you can do a little something Camaro's with it. Camaro's a great platform to modify. Now, tell us about this car. How much heavier is this than the standard uh, Camaro? From what I've read, and I haven't scaled one, they're about 250 pounds heavier. Okay. And so you do feel that a little bit driving the car. Yeah, so if you have a fat friend, it's like driving with him in the car all the time. That's why I prefer, I, I, I like a coupe. I'm not a big convertible guy. Right. Just because of the weight difference and the handling. Sure. But that aside, it's not like the old days where, I remember the old days, you know, convertibles and doors would go like this on railroad right. track. Now, the, 300, the extra 300 pounds obviously goes into a, a chassis stiffening Correct. and everything like that. So to make up for that extra 300 pounds, you put another how many horsepower? 200 there? horsepower. Okay. Yeah, okay. just about 200 horsepower. This is our HP 600 supercharged upgrade, and this makes 602 horsepower okay. flywheel. Uh, are these wheels? These are not stock wheels. These are uh, upgraded three-piece Hennessy wheel. They've okay. got larger. Uh, Pirelli tires on all four corners, so give it a little bit more grip. And what size wheel is that? It's a 20 by 9.5 in the front and 20 by 10.5 in the rear. Okay. Inch wider front and rear compared to stock. Now, I've got a Camaro as well. Mine is a, uh, mine is a coupe with a V6, the twin turbos. It's got 525 horsepower. Right. But we'll do that another time. I'm okay. anxious to see how it compares to this. Sure. Any other visual differences Yeah, now? we have a carbon fiber body upgrade that we call our Carbon Arrow. So it's got a carbon fiber rocker panel, a lot like what's oh, on the ZR1, as see. well as the front splitter, which adds more okay. downforce to the front yeah, of the car. Yeah. Uh, we added the stripes to the hood. You race, how fast do you have to go to get any benefit from a splitter? You know, the, the splitter on this car probably starts working about 60 miles an hour. Oh, it does. Even yeah. that low, huh? You bet, yeah. Because I always see these guys with wings and stuff. And you go, you know, where are you going? Yeah. Really? Well, you if you're going to Angeles Crest or a road course, the aero packages mm -hmm. will give you more downforce. But they'll also slow you down in a straight line. Right, right. So we don't want too much downforce. Just enough to give the car a little bit more stability. Okay, so the so. thing, this is... Uh, You've added this here? Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. All right, supercharged. Mm -hmm. Now let's open the hood, see what okay. it looks like Sounds under there. Okay, sounds good. Are you using the Eaton, the same superchargers on the ZR1? It's very similar. It's a, it's a 2300cc blower. It's very similar to what's on the ZR1. Who, make, who makes it? Is it Eaton? This is an Eaton. Oh, Correct. it is Eaton. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, Eaton makes yep. a good product. Yeah, that's a really good piece. And the nice thing is it fits under the hood. This, well, this is not a... This is it's not, a factory hood. Oh, it is yeah, the factory hood. Yeah, it fits under hood. the factory okay. hood. Now, the strut tower brace is new for the convertible. Okay. And I believe GM added that just for more structural rigidity, the fact that the car doesn't have the top. Yeah. But, uh, well, we always used to call this the Monte Carlo bar when I was there a you kid. Go. Because uh, uh, the Ford Falcons, when they raced the Monte Carlo, had that, and then Mustang had it. So, whenever I call it a Monte Carlo bar, people in the comments section, "Oh, you jerk! It's not a," bar. but that's what I call it. So, and it's my website, so I'm going to call it that. But uh, very nice, nicely done. And again, nice clean package. You got the K and N filter right, here. Right. Got the K&N, uh, got the, the 2300cc blower on top. This car is set up on pump gas. A 91 octane is uh, running about eight pounds of boost. This car makes a little over 500 at the wheels through the automatic. Now you're running eight pounds of boost through this. Correct. When you were here a while back with the Cadillac, you were running 13 pounds of boost. Correct. Uh, and on the on the Cadillac motor as well as the Zero One motor, they have lower compression. Mm -hmm. They're around nine to one compression. I see. This has got about a 10.3. Okay, so uh, you don't one you don't go into the motor on these. Correct. Okay. This just has the blower, the air intake, the long tube headers, the high flow catalytic, catalytic converters, and it's flowing through the factory rear section exhaust, so it sounds yeah. nice and quiet when you're just tooling around. So what he's saying is this is basically a bolt-on operation. It's a bolt-on package. Someone would drive their Camaro to your shop without tearing into the engine at all. Right. You bolt everything on and... This takes a couple of days. We've yeah. got a shop in Texas and a shop here in, in Orange right, County. Right, right, right. So, so the nice we also thing sell is, this mail order too, so guys can buy it and yeah. have a mechanic install it for them. So you're not you're not affecting uh, the motor at all, and hopefully not not voiding the warranty. No, how do you handle warranty? Well, we, we offer our own three or thirty six thousand mile warranty that's limited to the modifications we make to the powertrain. Gotcha. And in the last two years, we've built over five hundred Camaros with five hundred plus horsepower, and we've had very few problems with them. Well, let them. me ask you a question. Suppose somebody. Uh, 
broke a ring gear or uh, you know, but the driveline piece, yeah. you know, we don't we don't cover wear items. So if you right. if you if you burn out your back tires, if you break your if you put well, no, but I'm saying, for example, because you're putting 600 horsepower right. through a system that was designed for That's 400 correct. horsepower, and something breaks in the transmission, would that if be something a broke item? in the transmission, we would take care of that. Yeah, yeah. If somebody was out putting race slicks on it, going to yeah, the drag strip right. and, and beating on it, yeah, that's yeah. A different. Our, our warranty doesn't cover racing. But for guys driving on the street, we've had very, very few issues. Well, I'm old cars. enough to remember when the Chrysler Hemi came out. If you bought the Hemi with the automatic, you got a 90-day warranty. You got three months, and that was it. Right. <laughs> You're on your own after that. So, so very nicely done. As you can see, it's a nice, neat installation here. Everything fits under the hood. Yep. And it's strictly bolt-on. And you're only running eight pounds of boost, so that's not crazy. So that's that's Correct. still within limits. This package is about 15 grand installed with warranty. Very nice. And the rest of the upgrades nice. are about another and 10 grand. And of course, uh, no need to upgrade the brakes anymore because uh, Chevy's uh, GM now comes. Are these Brembo? Those are Brembo's. Those are Brembo's yeah, as well. Yeah, it's got Brembo's okay. in all four corners. So what package would you start with when you get a Camaro? What's the best one to start you with? Want to get, you want to get the, the, the SS package, which has the V8. You can get that with the LS3, right. which is the six-speed manual, which is 426 horsepower. The automatics start with a little bit less horsepower, 400 right. horsepower. Uh, I like the 2SS, which gives you a few other upgrades. Were you telling me that the automatic has a cylinder deactivation? Correct. Okay. Yeah, and, and we actually turn that off right. when we do our upgrade. Okay. And it doesn't really seem to affect the fuel economy. This right. will still get over 20 miles to the gallon on the highway. Nicely done. All stock interior as well. Nice stitching. And it's the automatic. And this is this, this, you getting old one way for six feet. That's the way the customer ordered. Oh, that's the way the customer yeah, ordered. Right. You know, well, customer a real man would have a you know stick car, right? Customer is always right. So the guy ordered this is not a real man, is that what you're saying? Oh no, no, no. 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 Oh, you're hanging yourself. Okay. You're hanging yourself. Now I prefer the stick myself, but the automatic is very nice. Let's uh, take it for a ride and see how it goes. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds healthy. As you can see, it, it's pretty quiet normally, and then you put your foot in it. Now, if you come to this website a lot, you know a couple of weeks ago, we uh, road tested the uh, Cadillac uh, CTS-V, the 700 horsepower. It's funny, this feels like a bigger car than the Cadillac to It me. does, it, it, it's heavier. It might actually be heavier and wider. Yep. Uh, but that being said, very solid for a convertible, handles nicely, drives nicely, and as you can see, it's fairly quiet below uh, 2,500 RPM. You put your foot in it, and suddenly those exhausts open up. Now, the base price of this car is about 40 grand, and then uh, once John gets finished with the modification, it's about, what, another 20? 25. 20, 25, something yeah. like that. It'll be interesting to see what history has to say about these cars. Because when I was a kid, the John Hennessy of his day was Carroll Shelby. And he would build these Shelby Mustangs. And they were about, uh, oh, 40, maybe 50% higher than the cost of a regular Mustang. And then in the 70s, you could get them for almost nothing. And of course, now they're half a million dollar cars. And you know, each one of these Hennessy vehicles has got a serial number. And they don't build a whole lot of them. I mean, the most of any car you've built is what, Vipers? Yeah, How we've many probably built done? Uh, a couple 300 Vipers over the okay. last 15, 20 years. Okay, over 20 years, maybe about 500 Vipers? Not even that many. Not even that many, yeah. okay. Although initially you pay a little bit more for these vehicles, I think you will, you'll probably get that back. I think these will become collective vehicles in the future. These will be the muscle cars that uh, the young kids that are 17 and 18 will remember, just as we remembered the GTOs and the Shelby Mustangs. So it's uh, when John's an old man, hey, there's that guy. Yeah. He'll be showing up, signing autographs, not remembering whether he did it or not. It's a nice looking car. This massive A pillar here is that way because this literally has to take the strength of the whole vehicle if you're an idiot and you roll the thing over. You know, in the old days, when you, you'd see a car that was rolled over, it'd be literally crushed like a pancake. Nowadays, people actually walk away from rolling over cars like this because of this massive protection. I mean, you pay for it in weight, but hey, it saves your neck. work. 
You know, in the ideal world, I'd be in this Camaro, 600 horse, top down, Christy Brinkley sitting next to me. Well, <laughs> two, two out of three is not bad. <laughs> but of course, the big question is, will it do a burnout? That's the, you know, that's the all important question. You know, it's kind of funny to me that here it is almost 50 years on from the whole Camaro Mustang Wars, and now they're back, you know. Uh, now you've got the Camaro guys. And I think this year Camaro outsold Mustang. I'm it not did. sure. Yeah. So uh, they get that whole thing going again, and it's fun to see. Uh, Mustang's got the Laguna Seca. Uh, Camaro's got this. I mean, so it's kind of fun to see those, uh, those old pony wars getting back together again. But uh, before we go... Let's see if we'll do a burnout. What do you think? Just leave it and drive? Yeah, leave it and drive. I try to try to control the yeah, and you're good. That was a pretty good burnout. See that? There's no substitute for immaturity. <laughs> That's right. We're back in high school. We're having fun with the Camaro. Hey, uh, hope you guys like this one. See you next week.